Hi, Chuck Penn here. I want to turn you on to this particular video because this video has garnered more views than any of the videos that I've uploaded. In fact, maybe more than all of the others combined for some crazy reason or another. It's with a, an Egyptian gentleman that I interviewed at the Diop conference at Temple University. And at that time, he was embroiled in this knockdown, drag out battle with the US government over how the US government classifies Egyptians. Because in the United States, under our way that we classify people uh, for the census, Egyptians are classified as being white. And he took exception to that. And he got a lot of pushback from the school system that he was working for. I'd love to know where Mustafa is at right now. I tried to find him. I think he's back in his native, his native Egypt, but I wasn't able to connect with him. If I do, I certainly want to interview him and find out how his case turned out because at that time he vowed to, to take it all the way to the Supreme Court. But I want to showcase this video for you, so here it is. Uh, I am a black Egyptian. My father is much darker than I am. My mother is lighter than I am. Uh, in Egypt, people are identified by the religion first, not the race. So in Egypt, if you are Christian, you are a minority person. But if you're black, you're not a minority person. You are a part of the mainstream society. And I came from this background. And uh, in Egypt, you identify as Arab and as Muslim. And in this country, when I first came, I identified myself as Arab American and Muslim first, and gradually I became, to, I became to identify myself as black. I came to the U.S. in 1978, and I became a U.S. citizen in 1985. When I, became an, when I became a U.S. resident, I was told by the Immigration and Naturalization that I am white. And I told them that I am black, and they said, no, in this country, you are white. All Arabs in this country, all Arab immigrants are white. I didn't pay much attention in the beginning to this, because in the Arab world, we identify with our ethnicity first as Arabs and, with, and then with the race second as black or white or whatever. But in this country, you identify with your racial group first and then with your ethnicity second. Gradually, I became re black first and Arab second. And I rejected my white classification publicly for the first time in 1987, in February as a panelist in a function sponsored by the Association of the Study of Black Life and History in Detroit. Uh, I said that uh, I belong to two minority groups. I am Arab American and Black American, and I am racially black and ethnically Egyptian. I was harassed by my employer right after that. I work for a white school district. The superintendent is white. All the associate superintendents are white, even though that we provide services to 30% black population. Uh, but the organization is white, and the approach is very white. The attitude towards me changed completely after I went out publicly and, 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 and rejected my white classification. Uh, one coworker came to me and told me, a white coworker came to me and told me right after the function that he met with the superintendent, and if I don't keep my mouth shut, my educational career is over. He said, you have nothing to do with these people. You have a history and a culture. These people came from the jungle. They have, you have nothing to do with them. These people lie and steal. When I see one of them in my neighborhood, I call the police. And I was told by the director of general education, who is retired now, uh, in 88, I was told by him that I get people angry when I say that I'm black Egyptian. If I just say that I'm Egyptian, I would get along. I have to add that I was denied promotion twice because I chose black classification. This is part of my two lawsuits against my employer, which are currently pending, two lawsuits. Now, uh, just for our, the education of our viewership, why don't you share with us uh, a breakdown of Egypt as it is today, in so far as blacks or uh, combinations thereof of European descent and what have you? We don't have we don't have Egyptians of European descent in Egypt. We have a population which is basically the inter, uh, which is basically a mixture of ancient Egyptian blacks who intermarried with Arabs right after the Arab conquest. The ancient Egyptian population was brown and black before the Arab conquest. But, but before the Arab conquest came the Greeks. It was ancient, the ancient Egyptian population was in Egypt 
for thousands of years. The, the ancient Egyptian population was brown and black. And the Greeks came in 300 BC. And they started to intermarry with the local population. And then the Romans came and ruled from 70 BC until they were con conquered by the Arabs and kicked out by the Arabs in the 7th century. And these people intermarried with the Egyptian Copts. And, and, and they, made the, they, made, they made the pigmentation of the, of the Egyptians, the Copts, much lighter because of this intermarriage with Europeans. Now, how, you're an educator, okay? Now, how do you deal with situations uh, when you practice your profession in so far as dealing with the mythology or the misconceptions about Egypt uh, being a white civilization? How do you deal with that? Uh, this is a big problem because Egypt, the ancient Egyptian civilization was a black civilization and ancient Egyptians were black according to the Greek scholars and the Roman scholars. Ancient Egypt became white only in the 19th century and in the 20th century. And the scholar who is responsible for this is Seligman. A no, the noted anthropologist from England, Seligman. White supremacy argues that blacks are inferior than white intellectually. They are subhuman and they are incapable of building a civilization. White supremacy had one dilemma until Seligman came. The dilemma was ancient Egypt was black according to the Greek and the Roman scholars. Ten of them said that including uh, Aristotle and, and, and uh, Plato. Ten of them said that uh, in writing. They had this dilemma, ancient Egyptian was black. So if blacks are inferior intellectually are, and are incapable of building a civilization, how come the ancient Egyptians built a civilization? Seligman found the solution for this dilemma. He came up with a theory called the Hamite theory. He separated the blacks who built a civilization in Egypt and Ethiopia from the rest of the black race, and he called them brown-skinned whites, or the Hamites. So Seligman saved white supremacy from this dilemma, and all the white scholar followed him from that, from that time on. This was at, at, the, at the end of the 19th century. And since that time, white scholarship says that ancient Egypt is, 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 is white. Mustafa Hefni is currently working on his doctorate degree at Wayne State University. His dissertation topic is a content analysis of the treatment of ancient Egypt in world history textbooks. And just how far is this determined Egyptian willing to go to be classified black? I want to carry my case all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court if necessary.